Okay, hello uh, YouTube. Right, this video is basically for any studio geeks out there. Um, I've had a bit of a move around and a bit of a, uh, a revamp of my studio because I'm starting to do some uh, sort of music tech, music production lessons from in here as well. So that means I've had to uh, have a bit of a move around. But I, it's looking pretty sexy now. So I thought I'll, I've not quite finished it, but I thought I'd do a quick. Uh, a quick tour so you can see the gear that I've got. Now, if you're interested in, just I'm just going to focus on all this at the moment. Um, if you're interested in how all of this is connected together and I'm using all of this, then keep an eye out over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm going to just be doing a series of videos on how I use all of this with a computer and without a computer and without an iPad and so on. Um, it's some crazy mental MIDI connections, but I've got it all working really well at the moment, so I'm really happy with that. Um, so, okay, let's just start over here. Um, so obviously you can see on the walls I've got uh, a bit of sound dumping stuff. I need to get a few more just to finish on there because I ran out of uh, squares on that bit. But start over in the, let's start over here. Uh, so we go over here. Uh, right, so over in this corner we've got kind of like the, uh, the seating waiting area or the uh, sort of studio recording area uh, with a coffee machine and a water machine and a lovely green light in the corner. Uh, coming across here, uh, I've got this, um, that's about the years, this was, this was my wife bought this when she was learning to play the piano <laughs> years ago. Uh, it's an old Yamaha, it's a uh, PSR 310 keyboard. Um, I basically kept it because it's actually got some quite nice sort of piano organ-y sounds on it. And if you listen to those other videos, you'll hear uh, what that sounds like. Uh, so that's that. Uh, we've got an Ovation Launch Key 49 up on the top. Um, on my homemade double keyboard stand. I got a single keyboard stand and I got loads of bits and bobs from um, old uh, drum racks and I managed to make a two tier one which saved me some money which is always good which means I've got more money to spend on all of this stuff. Uh, moving around we've got the Roland SPDS uh, drum pads um, and then basically over here I've got this old, there's my council tax bill, you don't need to see that. Um, we've got, sorry, uh, I've got an old JVC Hi-Fi, uh, which basically is what I'm using as the amp for my Tannoy uh, monitors, because they are passive monitors, not active monitors. So that's basically used as an amp. Uh, but it also it gives me, I've got, there's a couple of cassette decks on there as well. There's a CD player as well. So it, it kind of gives me a bit of flexibility if I want that. Um, below there, uh, that's just like a cam moonbeam um, lighting thing. Uh, so I've got my little rack mount thing, got a couple of rack mount things in here. We've got a patch bay uh, up on the top. If you want to know how to use patch bays, I have a, there is a video on my channel um, explaining how that patch bay is used. I'm using it slightly differently now from uh, that video. Again, I'm going to cover that in the next video. This video is not about tutorials or anything, it's just about going through the gear that I've got. But um, I've always kind of steered away from patch bays for years until I finally got one and they are very, very useful. So it's worth getting one. Uh, they're not, not expensive either. Um, and then below that here, we've got an old Yamaha. It's the uh, TMX drum module, uh, again, rack mount drum module, uh, which I picked up on eBay a few years ago, really cheap. And it's actually got some quite nice sound in it, some nice retro -y sounds and so on. So this is the main kind of studio recording area, if you like, with my chair and my fan um, and a load of crap down there. Um, so we've got Korg Mini Log. We've got a couple of Volkers in one of these nice stands. Again, you get them off eBay, pretty cheap, about 30 quid. Um, so we've got the Volker keys and the Volker bass. We've got loads of Ira gear. So we've got the Roland TR8. We've got the MX1, which is my main mixer. We've got a stand there where uh, the iPad, which I suppose I should have put on there for this video, but it's not there. But that normally has an iPad just there. Um, I've got a kind of like a little pedal, uh, guitar effects pedal board thing here that these all sit in which is easy enough I need to carry them around anywhere which has a TB03, a Novation launch control, uh, there's a distortion pedal that runs the uh, the MAM, MA, sorry the MB33 like ACD bass thing goes through that to give it a bit of distortion. Uh, we've got a Korg Electribe which if I'm not using the computer is basically the central hub of everything because I sequence everything off that. Again, going to explain this in full in a different video. Uh, got the Roland System 1 synth under here. Uh, ooh, sorry. There we've got a uh, just a, um, a mixer for the turntable, which is under here. 
um, because the turntable needs um, power and so on um, from that. So that, that does that. That also gives me the turntable then. If I just want to listen to some records, I can play that off there. But again, that's all connected um, through all of this. So if I want to sample anything off any old vinyl, I can do that from that, that deck down there. I've um, got a USB hub, which is all linked into the iPad. Again, all of this will be explained in more detail later on. Uh, I've got a nano control too, which I'm not using at the moment, but it's just sitting there looking nice. Uh, we've got the VT3, the Roland voice thing, and then there is a few effects pedals down here. Again, not got these connected up at the moment, but there's a chorus, um, a re whatever that is, a uh, delay reverb, and no, that's a delay, that's a reverb, uh, and there's the other speaker. Um, so that's kind of, I just sort of pull back, so that's the first half of the studio, which is kind of like the the studio recording, mixing, writing area. The other half of the studio, zup, which is down this end, is the teaching half of the studio with a poster of Mr. Tommy Lee, uh, one of my favorite drummers over there. So um, my main line of work actually is I'm a drum teacher. Uh, I teach from the studio here, which is basically used to be my garage. So this is my house. Um, and I also teach in a few local schools. So this is obviously the main teaching drumming area. So this is the kit that I sit up, um, which is a Joe Becky kit, brilliant kit, made um, actually not too far away from I am, um, sort of in um, Staffordshire Way. Well, I mean, not even sure in England, but this, they're, they're made, I think, Staffordshire Way. Um, and they basically make these amazing looking kits. Um, so they are called Joe Becky, J O B. E K Y and they make these kits that look like acoustic kits, but they are electronic kits and they are absolutely brilliant. So go and check those out if you want an electronic kit or indiv indeed individual drums that would fit nicely with an acoustic kit. Check them out. Um, so the Joe Becky kit is getting its sounds from uh, a Roland TD3 sound module. And then we've got like double pedals and sticks and all sorts of stuff down there. Uh, behind the Minions is a headphone splitter, which is just so all the sound and everything goes through the headphones because I teach on electronic kits. So I would sit at this kit uh, with headphones. Student sits at that kit with headphones and then we can both hear both kits and any music that's playing through between. And then the monitors are for um, like lesson notes and songs that we learn. They, they come up on the screen. So those two screens are connected together to a laptop, which normally sits there. Uh, and all the lesson notes go up on the screen, which works pretty well. The other kit over here is a D-Drum kit. They don't make these anymore. D-Drum stopped making electronic kits a few years ago, which is a shame because it's a brilliant kit. Uh, that's that sound module there. It's the D-Drum um, 4SE. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, just kind of takes sampled drum sounds. So they sound like acoustic drums. You can make them sound electronic if you want, but from an acoustic sounding point of view, brilliant. So that's the... Uh, the students kit over there um, that's a fridge all right we'll have a selection of drinks and chocolates to uh, sell to my pupils uh, what we've we got here uh, not being used at the moment but we've got an Akai MPK mini which is having a rest over there uh, obviously loads of posters and stuff on the wall but then this section is the new section um, which is my music tech music production teaching section so I can have up to four students in here at a time uh, so generally I like to try and do kind of groups of four. Uh, we've got, so each workstation has some sort of computer. So that's got a desktop. The middle two, that one's missing at the moment, but there's normally a laptop there. So there's laptops and then there's a desktop um, on the end. And you can see each workstation has an Ableton push um, with headphones. So pupils can sit and work on their stuff without disturbing the other pupils through the headphones. But then if we want to hear the work that they've done, all these uh, computers are going into this mixer just here, which is then going out into these speakers here and somewhere there. And there's a subwoofer underneath there somewhere so we can play um, stuff out loud. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's a window with some stuff on it. Um, there's a door. Uh, so I'll just big myself up there, all my cards I've had from um, happy pupils in the past saying, yes, you're an amazing teacher. Yes, thank you. Um, whiteboard up there where I write all the stuff on I gotta remember and another window over there um, so there we go that's the studio I'll do a quick pan round again um, just because I can uh, I need one of those 360 cameras don't I? 
Okay. Oh, there's some stuff down there. Uh, that's an old Eddie Roll MIDI keyboard, and then there's some lights in there. A cam party bar. Uh, back around to the seating area, and back around to there. So, that's the studio. Um, so, if you're interested in how all of this stuff works, because I'm guessing that's what most people who subscribe to my channel want to know about, uh, then keep an eye out. Subscribe to the channel, and you'll obviously get notifications when. Uh, I upload that. I've just got to get uh, get my head around how I'm going to explain it. I'm probably going to break it down into two or three videos so they're not too long. Um, but basically all of that is connected together. So when I press play on one thing, everything will play at the same time. I can run all of that without a computer. I can run it with a computer and I can also use an iPad and so on. So anyway, I'm jabbering on. Um, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next video when I explain that lot. Cheers. Bye.